important player for Rangers today. Has to give Rangers an out ball and try and back Alan Thompson up on that side of the pitch. Rickson and Nerlinger between them, I think, are going to have to be aware of Moravchik's movement. And Latipi and Lovenkrantz, I think, are vital in terms of giving Flo support. In the last game at Ibrooks, Flo ended up isolated, and when he was taking the ball in, he had no options. Well, the arrest of the Nottingham Rangers is being watched by millions around the globe, such as the pull of the old firm. The major issues may have been settled, so nothing riding on this game then. Want a bet? Paul Lambert has been an inspiration for Celtic this season and he could well be named Scotland's Player of the Year but he does have some competition for that prize Lorenzo Amoruso is in the running too a man for these occasions, he's played in 17 Old Firm games and has only lost four Sadly we only saw this man in the twilight of his career but Lubomir Moracic will forever have a place in the half season He'll be getting used to them soon he sent off Amoruso at Ibrox in September and was also in charge of an enthralling League Cup semi between the teams. Martin O'Neill hoping that his men can complete their season at Celtic Park with a 100% record in the league. They've never done it before, but then he has a habit of breaking records. Standing in his way, Alex McLeish. Unbeaten so far in Old Firm games. This is his third one. The old firm meets for the fifth time this season and they ain't finished yet. But if you think this one doesn't mean anything, think again. They always mean something. It may only be pride at stake today, but we are talking serious pride. Never before have Celtic gone through a league season with a 100% home record. They are nearly there. 18 wins out of 18 so far. This, their last home game. And trust Rangers to be standing in the way of Celtic history. Free kick straight away. Didn't take long to get one of those. It never usually does when Celtic and Rangers meet. Lubomir Moravchik in his Celtic Park farewell takes the free kick. Niobe was the intended target. Alan Thompson's shot was blocked by Malcolm. And now Kanchelski is making a, a rare appearance of late in these encounters. And Russell Latipi, well it's an old firm debut for him. And he's hurt in the first minute. Yeah, I think I'll, we'll see a few of these in the, the opening minutes of the game. I mean, the game will start pretty frantically. Lubomir Moravchik all over Russell Latipi there. And Rangers have started with Bob Malcolm in the, the central area, Morris Ross and Lorenzo Amoruso either side of him, so it looks as if Amoruso is going to pick up John Hartson. Well, here's Lovenkrantz with an early opportunity for Rangers, and it took the deflection, did it? It's flown in! A sensational start for Rangers! Well, they may have missed out on the title, but they might be having their day yet here. Well, Tom Boyd's looking at Johan Mialbe, felt he was due a bit of cover there as the ball was played forward, and misjudgment. And anything that does end up in behind, Lovenkrantz has the pace to get onto, the misjudgment there. Mialbe too far towards the central area there, and that gave Lovenkrantz the room. See Mialbe too close to Tom Boyd, it ends up underneath it, and with the aid of a wicked deflection, Lovenkrantz gets his second goal here at Celtic Park. What a start for Ali McLeish. Well, he probably dreamt of that last night. Alex McLeish's Rangers already won up at Selby Park. And Peter Lovenkrantz has now scored three times in five games against Celtic. He saves his best for these monumental occasions. Lifted off Johan Mialbi. Celtic rocked by that as they look to make it 19 wins out of 19 
at home in the Scottish Premier League this season. Here's Tor Andre Flo, and across came Stephen Craney. De Boer. Rickson. Now Lovenkrantz. Rangers are still waiting to bring on Michael Malls. It might happen now. As Kenny Clark uh, notices, he has. Tor Andre Flo is going to make way for the arrival of Michael Malls. He's had another injury play season. It's actually Malls' first appearance at Selby Park. He hasn't uh, figured too often in all firm matches. It's in a tough shift today, Tori Andy Flo, because he hasn't really had a partner. Lovin Kranz has played right across the front. A difficult shift for Tori Andy Flo. Michael Moles, the Dutchman, will be hoping to sneak one for Rangers as he makes his way into the box. And Steve Guppy's going to be on for Celtic very shortly, too. De Boer now. Arthur Newman. Oh, Robert Douglas was behind that, but of course memories there of Newman's screamer against him at Ibrox last month. Steve Guppy's going to come on in a moment for Celtic, and there will be some serious noise when that happens because. It looks like Lubomir Maratic will be the man to make way. Yeah, that should free Stylian Petrov to, to go and play further forward. And Alan Thompson, I'd imagine, would play one in on the left-hand side if Guppy comes on. And will encourage Petrov to go and support the front two. Well, just listen to the reaction from the Celtic fans for this man. It's a farewell to Lubomir Maratic as he bows out of Celtic Park. Thanks for the memories. A little marvel who has entertained the Celtic fans and the neutrals in the twilight of his career in Scotland. Steve Guppy on in place of Maratja. Lubo, Lubo, the cry from the fans. Oh, a missed kick from Malcolm, but uh, Amaruso deals with it. Russo, a contender for the Player of the Year awards in Scotland, of course, Paul Lambert too, and we have on our team today uh, three guys who've uh, won that award in Davy, Charlie and Richard Goff. Right bunch of smarties. Here's Kanchelskis, Michael Malls trying to dig this one out. And it comes off Boyd, but Ronald De Boer gets it back from Kanchelskis. Now Rickson, Newman, Nerlinger, Michael Malls, and just as he was about to shoot, Mialbi came crashing through. Stylian Petrov is going to get the free kick, just caught by Nerlinger. Yeah, Johan yeah. Mialbi looks as if he's struggling, he did well to, to tuck in there to get to Michael Moles. He has had a, a groin injury, of course. Well, he seems to play through his injuries, yeah, uh, Mialbi. <laughs> Fantastic, really. He actually got a knock playing for Sweden in midweek as well on his knee, but uh, shook that one off. Still got a few other knocks to deal with. Boyd's free kick, and Hartson backing into Amarusa. Tough decisions for referees these, you know, strikers back in all the time, Amoruso's hands are up, it's another one they could have been awarded either way. Amoruso up towards Michael Malls. Into the path of Fernando Rickson, his first touch let him down, allowed Boyd to clear. Now Didier a gap. Amoruso in ahead of Hartson, but... Kanchelski is in ahead of Guppy. Moles. Just over a quarter of an hour remaining in the east end of Glasgow. Boyd to Hart. 
Larson. Larson making moves ahead of him naturally. And Markham intervened. And Nerlingen got back as well. Newman. He seems to have shaken off that knock, he usually does. He will be looking for his fellow countryman Larson, but it's away by Amoruso, and now Moles. There's a hint that Levenkrantz could escape then, but nothing doing. Petrov. Draney. Through the middle of Castilio and Petrov, but Markham saw it coming. Now to Bort. Fernando Rickson. De Boer. And a little nudge from Alan Thompson. And Rickson and Lennon had a little pop at each other then. Most unlike those two, eh? <laughs> Pretty well behaved, the way he's been playing in a good spirit this match. I've got to say, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been an entertaining encounter. I can never believe it when they say an old third match doesn't matter, because it always matters. There's always something at stake. De Boer to Rickson. Boyd's clearance has only gone to Nerlinger. It cannoned off Mialbi. Kinshelsk is nearly in, but Guppy did well for Celtic. De Boer. Nerlinger. Arthur Newman. Neil Lennon is going to rush in, but here's Rickson, and Thompson is quickly in on him. Wonderful challenges from Celtic. And Hendrik Larsson looking to get away from Amoruso now. This could be interesting. Amoruso has not let much go past him this time, but he fouled Larsson then. The quick free kick, too quick. They're going to come back. It's going to be a card, in fact, for Amoruso. But just as well, they pulled the play back to book Lorenzo Amoruso because Celtic otherwise would have had a gap away in the right hand side. Well, Kenny Clark showed a red card to Lorenzo Amoruso back in September, but it's just a yellow for now. First Rangers man to be booked in this game. Alan Thompson whips it in. And Guppy away by Nerlinger here's Guppy second half replacement for Lubomir Moravchik Guppy finds his former Leicester teammate Lennon now Hartson he continues his battle with Amoruso and he's got his cross in and Guppy's coming in on it and it was just flipped behind by Kanchelskis for a corner yeah it's good defending by Kanchelskis a terrific ball in from the wide area from John Hartson Chelsea's right way back in his own six yard box. It's Alan Thompson's corner. Oh, and Hartson is in there! It's out! Is it going to go in? Cross has dropped on it. And everybody's having a kick, and it's all starting now. And Kenny Clark's got a big problem here. Oh dear, it's threatening to turn very nasty. Oh, it's a pity. It's a pity. Well, how's he going to sort this one out? <laughs> and there are going to be cards coming out here. I wonder what the colour will be. What a save, it's a wonderful save. Plenty on the header there. Floss automatically puts the gloves up and does enough. It's a red card for John Hartson. He has been sent off after that melee which followed the scramble. Hartson sees red. And it's also red for Mialbi as well. And incredibly, Celtic have had two men sent off as a result. Oh, another one! Another one! Rickson has gone! Three men sent off as a result of that incident. Well, isn't that... Just typical of the old firm, Hartson, Mialbi, Rickson, all red carded. Well, just when we thought it was going to pass over peacefully, remarkable end to the game, Kenny Clark. 
must have had a very good view. I just wonder though whether Rickson and Melvia have been sent packing for something they said on the back of the incident. And John Hartson here comes in late. Now Ben Ritson wants to get on, and there's Hartson. That's also needless. It's been a smashing game of football. It shows you the, the passion that bubbles away under the surface in this match. Now we're reacting to the, the push from Ritson initially. Hartson's on his way already. Kenny Clark showing three red cards, straight reds all round for Mialbi, Hartson and Rickson. And uh, there we were thinking it would have been such a spirited game as well between the two teams, but that's the old firm for you. There's another card being shown here. Alan Thompson has got a yellow card. I was doing quite well keeping up with the card count, but uh, I think I've lost the plot now. Oh, it's all over in fact. And this Old Firm game ends amid controversy as three players are sent off in the last minute. It also ends all square, but uh, as usual, so many, so many talking points. Peter Lovenkrantz put Rangers ahead after 64 seconds. Alan Thompson equalised just before the break. Both those players have a habit of scoring in old firm games. Martin O'Neill is denied a 100% home record in the Scottish Premier League. They couldn't quite do it. Trust Rangers to stop them. But uh, right at the end, it all kicked off big time. Quick word for Tom Boyd though, because the curtain comes down on his Celtic career after 10 years at the club. Tremendous servant to them. But uh, the headlines will be grabbed by what happened at the end of the game when three players were sent off after a nasty melee in the goal mouth. Mialbi, Hartson and Rickson all saw red. Well. That's set it up quite nicely, hasn't it, for the Scottish Cup final in just under a fortnight's time. Another incredible old firm encounter. It ends Celtic 1, Rangers 1. What a finish there. Now, here at 3 o'clock. What, scoring in the first minute? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Never does you any start. harm. Never does you any harm. And that, that set it up and they could have gone on and scored a, scored a couple more. It's a defensive mistake, I think, initially from Tommy Boyd. Uh, Mian, Johan Mial, the man of the match, was coming on to it and probably maybe should have shouted, but we don't know, they weren't at pitch level. Charlie, has Lovenkrans played himself right into that cup final team? I think he has, yes. I, I think since he, he probably scored against Celtic at Hampden in the semi-final League Cup, I think he made himself one of the main strikers now and uh, I think he should have scored in that opportunity and it would have made a completely different game for Rangers but then Celtic to have to come and really attack them. They were, they were open to counter-attack, but first half I really do think the Rangers played well. Again, possibility of penalty. I've seen them given, but Kenny Clark was in good position. And Richard, the age-old question, does Flo do enough? Well, I thought he played well today. I thought he linked up well. It's um, the best I've seen him uh, in, in, in these type of games. Um, and he put a good shift in until um, obviously Alex McPhee took him off he, and Michael Moles, but could, they're okay today. Yeah, if I could just come in flow, I mean, it's not his fault against the £12 million pound, uh, pound price tag. Yeah. That is not his problem. But he doesn't get on the ball enough for me. If he wanted on the ball, he's not the most aggressive, then he, he really would turn and cause the defenders more problems. But it's been a very impressive goal scoring record. Did you expect more from Moravchik in his last game here at Celtic Park? I did, but I think fair, uh, a fair amount of credit, especially first half goes to Rickson and Rangers tactics. I think they marked them well, they kept them deep. This is one time that I think Rangers just were a little naive. Malcolm and Ross, I think, did very, very well today with Amoruso. But this is a crucial time in the game. You've yeah, got to defend five solid. minutes before half time. It's a bit unfortunate. You could you could say Bob could have done a bit better, Bob Malcolm there, but he's gone he's gone for the tackle and the yeah. balls broke a bit unkindly for him. Alan Thompson being in the box, uh, and there's 
been in there, just finished it well. Clutch, Clutch does so well for Rangers. Well, he rescued he? his own mistake though. He actually tries to read the situation. Both yep. himself and Richard said at half time, if you're a goalkeeper and you're facing talent like Larson, Maravchik, anybody else, don't gamble, don't try and read it. You have to stay in your solid side. And if he's good enough to beat you, then he is. But this was a good opportunity, I, I felt, for Celtic. He was into a good area. Maravchik, not the best in the air, but gets up well. And I, you know, I, I was never the best in the air, so it's hard for me to totally be uh, critical, but you really should hit the target there. Rangers were, were not the favourites to win by any means today, though, Richard. I mean, it was odds on for Celtic because yeah. of the depleted team. So when you look back at this, they did well for McLeish today, didn't they? It's a good result. I think before the game, Rangers are coming here, and if they, they, they're saying to themselves, if we can get a draw here, or we'd, we would take that. I think Rangers yeah. would have taken that before the game, just because of the injury situation, and with a cup final in, in 13 days' time. So the, the, the worst thing for, for Rangers was coming here and losing by three or four goals for the cup final in, in, in 13 days. Coming here now, getting a good result and playing and playing pretty well. And here we go. This is when it all kicked off. Well, and as, it's as you so can see, needless, there's, isn't it? There's, there's no punches being thrown. Everybody's trying to get each other. I think Kenny Clark actually gets knocked, you know, practically to the ground on a couple of occasions. But as you can see, I mean, there's a couple of little extra kicks, but I don't think anything too aggressive. But why is Rickson getting involved there with Mialbi? Well, because he kicks the whole thing off, Yeah, Charlie. well, he does. I mean, if he's standing over Mialbi and has a few words, fair enough. But, you know, the fact that he pushes him, yeah. that causes reaction, and that's all you get. You get reaction, but not over-aggressive. But we know, we know he gets excited in all firm games, don't we? Yeah, Rickson. he, he, was, <laughs> oh, yeah. he did very well yeah. today. He was he very did, controlled yeah. today. He did. But, I mean, Alec McLeish at the moment, unbeaten in all firm games. Yeah. He's seen one of his players sent off who played very well. But Hartson, who I like as a guy, really shouldn't have gone back in there, should he? Well, what, Jim? I have to, I have to say again, the, sometimes yeah. you're getting in there to try and actually help the situation rather than getting involved in it. Well, what replays there, what do you think of events at the end of the game? Yeah, it's, I think you've got to remember the, the high stakes of this, these type of games and players are, are playing to win and they really showed that they wanted to win both both sets of side, uh, both sides and when you see the, the header off the bar and reaction by uh, Yalby and Larson perfectly entitled to go for the ball but you know in with the studs on the goalkeeper and, and Fernando's tried to protect his goalkeeper uh, he looks a little bit rash in terms of him pushing he may be could I get in between them? Uh, but in saying that, you know, it turns into a melee and, and a frack. And we've seen them all too often in, in big games like this. I can understand the, the passion that goes with it and the players out there. It's easy, easy to sit on the sidelines and say, don't get involved. But, you know, these guys are playing for high stakes.